Rosie. Okay, so it is 9.15. It ran a little bit longer than we thought. So we will do this as... I think we can do it. Uh, it's going to be close. I think we can make it. Um, so I am going to need uh, Vivi, uh, Lila, Renee, Jill, Alex, Elaine, and Nichols. Um, I am a um, full-time writer uh, currently on uh, Atran, and uh, Jill is my roommate. And uh, occasionally, when I'm working on a story, uh, I and I'm not sure what to do with it. There is a suggestion that is given to me that uh, I can't ever actually take. So for January, I decided to do a story where I intentionally did that thing that I can't normally do. Uh, this is called One Must Consider the Practical Factors. Most of, this story, most of the story, most of the going in and out of a door, so just pretend there's a door. <laughs> Are you narrating this? Uh, I am. Right. Are you reading the scenes or am I? I, was, I didn't think, I figured nobody would. Okay. That's just, uh, we definitely rehearsed this. <laughs> <laughs> many, many times. I thought just times. Times. Yeah. 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 I think this works. <laughs> Mrs. Dashwood, having seldom slept the previous three nights, knocked softly. Her slender fingers fidgeted with the hem of her skirt in anticipation of hearing her daughter's voice. Love is about the details. Please enter. She had thought it wise to postpone the news concerning Colonel Brandon's proposal until the color returned to Marianne's pallid forehead. It was now around mid-morning. The sunlight crept cautiously around the window pane. Marianne, it pleases me to see you well. Your companionship pleases me, Mama. I beg of you, how fares Eleanor? I have sorely missed her as of late. Has she visited my chambers? She has, my dear. She mentioned that your illness had rendered you rather languid, and that you would most likely fail to recall your conversation. I expect her to arrive any moment now. The mother paused, hesitant to proceed. Before she could conjure up the next thought, Mrs. Jennings burst stridently into the room, bellowing helpfully. You poor thing! It has grieved me so to witness your recent state. Some days it seems as only the Lord's most sacred- Exterminate! <laughs> <laughs> My goodness! The genteel gossip gulped, unaccustomed to calls for execution in such close proximity to the Lord's name. Are you quite well? Mrs. Jennings? But that noise came not for me. The gleaming bucket whirred menacingly across the floor. Large <laughs> turquoise spheres adorned every visible side of its stretched golden dome. Approximately five feet tall, it appeared to have two hands, both of which oscillated with abandon. <laughs> a kitchen utensil and some manner of cleaning contraption? What a marvelous appliance. Who dares call us contraption? We are Daleks! The bucket thundered, though it was clearly the sole representative of its species currently in Marianne's chambers. We have evidence you are harboring the doctor! The doctor is an enemy of the Daleks! Surrender or we shall exterminate! Bucket, you have obviously have an agenda of some urgency to complete, and I respect that. But as we stand in my bedchamber, and I am nursing a somewhat delicate constitution at the moment, your visit is most irregular. Marianne! My apologies, Mr. Bucket. My daughter seems to have misplaced her tact. What? Mama, surely you do not believe this intrusion appropriate. Perhaps Fanny might welcome the, the opportunity to entertain our guest. Of course I am not sanctioning extermination of any sort on the grounds. What? <laughs> and I understand, my dear, the newfound weight your heart carries but even in her most destitute, we shall not forsake our good name and desert our manners. Anticipated or not, the rasping bucket is company, and yet I did not hear you offer it a parting snack. A parting what? 
It's a machine, Mama. Unless Lucy's palate has undergone a significant shift since yesterday, the kitchen supply of factory grease remains somewhat lacking. Actually, <laughs> you would be surprised to discover how many common household foodstuffs contain the most delectable additives in the grease family. We prefer blazing buffalo ranch flavor, but <laughs> fried pickles with ranch is also most... Oh, I can conceal the truth no longer. I, I witnessed your doctor moseying about the property, Mr. Dalek. I attempted to approach, but they were intensely admonishing a cricket mallet. Perhaps you might consider trying the courtyard. Hold on a, just a moment. Just Doctor! The Dalek <laughs> gleefully shrieked and sprinted for the doorway with such haste that Marianne wondered if one could commit murder purely through volume. In seconds, the machine's strange, grinding, droning melody played its dying note. Well, I... Mrs. Jennings huffed as she rose from her chair, still perturbed that the visitor interrupted her romance commentary and never invited her to resume it. I believe I've enjoyed enough excitement for one afternoon. Young people these days. It nearly escaped me in all the hubbub. I wanted to congratulate you, dear. Your heart shall prove a perfect match with his. I shall plan on returning after you discuss the matter with your mother thoroughly. Well done. Mama, what does she speak of, and how come I not aware of it? Marianne, my love, you know that nothing is more permanent to me than your happiness. I would suggest, though, that perhaps the homicidal mechanical man shaped like an enormous pepper container should take press. Mama! <laughs> A withering glare that might have melted the Dalek. The elder Dashwood considered her options. Marianne, my love, Despite today's bafflements, a wondrous thing has happened. Since settling in Devonshire, I always assumed that he might select Eleanor, but indeed it was you who has won his affection. Mother? Colonel Blatt Brandon has professed his love for you, my dear. I have heard his declarations myself. The unflattering words Marianne had spoken months ago about the Colonel surfaced almost instantly, mocking her. Uh, to which that he has neither genius, taste, nor spirit, that his understanding has no brilliancy, his feelings no ardor, and his voice no expression. When did this dreadful meeting occur? Hush, Marianne, you forget yourself, child. I believe the Colonel to be a man of most excellent character. Colonel Brandon's substantial wealth would provide for Marianne's every whim. Moreover, Mrs. Dashwood's evaluation concluded that the man's mind was noble, his heart unselfish, and his manner sincere. That Marianne would eventually fall victim to the Colonel's love and cherishment was not in dispute. Mama, do you somehow believe I am to fall victim to the Colonel's love and cherishment? Do you ex and you expect me not to dispute that? Tis nonsense. I am sure Colonel Brandon is an honorable man, but his qualities are much better suited to Eleanor's disposition than to my own. And she is very practical, my sister. Will his eyes be as blind to her as they were open to me? Ah, oh, ha, ha, ha. Brandon looked upon her, beloved, but he has loved you since the first day we arrived. As I accompanied him on his return... Uh, hey, sorry, you ladies recording? Because I won't give her... Oh, oh sorry. Is that me? Marianne. Oh, Oh, this is... I'm carrying a package of Cheeto Puffs. <laughs> Mama, what is a Cheetos Puff? Not exactly the most pertinent question for this particular moment, dear. Took us plot cosplay, both of you. I designed a mashup between a CIA agent and a guitar, but those chocolate mimosas and the, at the irritable goose in punch hard, so I just went with Weekend Handy Dad myself. Anyway, I'm in the middle of a tuning emergency here. If you can direct me to some piano wire, a hot dog, a bit of neon gaffer tape, golden eye for the N64, and a trowel, I'll be out of your hair. What about my hair? Sir, your behavior is most inappropriate. I believe our guest is traveling, dear. What peculiar curiosities can unfold inside a shared di dialect? Perhaps he is simply lost? You stand in our residence, sir. Have you an appointment? An appointment? I'm just looking for the can, to be honest. 
Have you ever tuned a piano to open C? I'm pretty sure I can smell colors now. Instagram <laughs> sends me a reminder to post every couple days, so I figured I'd play some of my old Farfagnugan on an old-timey spinet, you know? I barely touched the thing. Please, state your name, sir. Oh, uh, John Roderick. Musician, <laughs> former sluice box, box mucker, three-time artisanal cupcake baker, and now piano technician. I doubt that Con will take repair costs out of my bill. They were never even organized enough to post any damn signage. I just believe in the value of being proactive about this shit. I'm starving. There's one food vendor at this con, and when I asked about the chili cheese dog, the lady... It's down the hall. All right, whatever it is you're searching for, I'm certain that you shall discover it by meandering that way. Cool. Thanks, nerds. You're really going method. I respect that. <laughs> Oh, Aunt Elizabeth, you're nailing that angst. Nightly it up. <laughs> it, it, it's unnatural. Mrs. Dashwood's attempt to remain composed felt increasingly tattered, a delicacy for moths. You must rest, darling. Whatever unhappy twist of fortune has inspired this afternoon, I shall discover the matter. Mama, our concentration shifts too readily. There is a pressing matter of the utmost... Yes, 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 Brandon. An adequate match. You shall be content to tolerate, eventually. Our, our pressing matter is by what means a mammoth murder bucket and a mountain man speaking in tongues rendered us their unwilling audience. Adequate? I, your beloved daughter, supposedly with the remainder of my years ahead of me, cursed to wed a man with a collection of flannel waistcoats? He has already received my consent, and gladly. I hardly think that you have enough knowledge of him to appropriately judge his character. What fault do you find in him? Marianne studied the overlapping patterns on her quilt, gently teasing a thick strand of ornamental copper fray. Under her fingers, then over, then halfway through the cycle, and back, and repeat. <laughs> well? And in a low, bashful voice. He is not... Willoughby. I should hope not. Colonel Brandon holds you in a significantly higher regard than does that pathetic, pathetic young man. Do you suppose summoning me during your darkest hours would have occurred to Willoughby? Perhaps not. But are you saying that as that as sole oversight, one misstep suggests a lack of value, Mama? That he is not worthy of my hand? Tis untrue. I failed him. Balderdash, it is he who failed you, Marianne. Neither of them noticed Eleanor hovering beside Mrs. Dashwood, too petrified to garner attention to herself. Meticulously, meticulously wringing her hands, she shifted her weight from one foot to the other. Anxiety dilated her pupils as she imagined her younger sister relapsing. Please know that I hold you in the deepest esteem, good narrator, but you might be overselling my nervousness a bit here. I am simply visiting my sister, not parachuting out of an airplane. Yes, but... <laughs> and what is the logical reason for my distress? Hey, Marianne inquires if I visited back on page one. <laughs> how do you know what an airplane is? I beg of you, how fares Eleanor, I have sorely missed... Yes, yeah, I know. Listen, Alice, I'm a narrator. I read the words. Well, who's writing this scribble? <laughs> um, we're on a bit of a schedule here, so... <sighs> Eleanor, I am glad for your presence, but you might have revealed yourself. <laughs> Why should anyone begin that now? My dear sister, I understand that your heart may be adverse towards Colonel Brandon, but our mother's words ring true. The Middletons have kept his companionship long and well. He's quite a respectable fellow, and I must admit that your blaze slack of him puzzles me. But then there's the dinner. And I might add that well-stocked yeah. coffers weave dreams with as much skill as any fantastical sprite could. Learning how to treasure his love would be a blissful experience. You love Willoughby still, that much is obvious. However, Marianne, the Colonel has pledged to be eternally faithful to you. In my estimation, in the view held by all you love, he's more than capable of such. Willoughby is comely, yes, but beauty fades. One must consider the practical factors. Am I falling ill? The 
this room seems stuffy. Really, Eleanor, there's no need to be unkind. Wait. Marianne frowned. She could sense a smoky aftertaste in the air that had not been present a moment ago. Colonel Brandon's, um, his wealth is not great enough to buy my affections? Was I uncomfortable to such a degree before Eleanor entered? You've already deprived him of his dignity. Can you not even- Roar! An ear-splitting roar sliced her thought in two, and the ground on which Barton College rested shook violently. <laughs> Beautifully handcrafted furniture snapped like twigs. The estate's finest kitchenware crashed to the floor. Precious jewelry suffered wound upon wound inside its protective boxes, strewn haphazardly into the ring of fire. On the library shelves, rare volumes dove down deep, only a syrup of pulp and ink behind. So gentle chaos sounds. Gentle chaos sounds. <laughs> Marianne approached the window. Unknown creature! You shall recognize the inherent superiority of the Daleks! Where is the doctor? Of course there's a Dalek. You must be here for the Filk Circle, right? Hey, is there even like a vending machine at this con? I met some Bronte cosplayers earlier and I don't think they understood the hunger of Roderick. What are you blattering about? I... Oh hey, a dragon! A what? <laughs> oh, a costume. Who's in there, Paul? Hey buddy, did you listen to podcasts?